Hello and welcome to Auten Math. In this edition of Auten Math, we're going to talk about adding and subtracting rational expressions. All right, uh, let's talk about the properties of adding and subtracting rational expressions. In order to add or subtract a rational expression, the rational expressions need to have a common denominator. So what do we mean by common denominator? Well, common means the same. And denominator is a lower half, the bottom half of the fraction. So in order to add or subtract rational expressions, the lower half or the denominator of each of the individual expressions needs to be the same. So the property would be for addition, if I have a fraction a over c plus b over c, then I can add a plus b and c remains the same. So my result would be a plus b over c. If I were to subtract uh, b over c from a over c, then as long as I have my common denominator, <clears throat> I just subtract b from a, I leave c alone, and I end up with a minus b, the difference between a and b, over c. Now sometimes we're going to have rational expressions that do not have like denominators, so we need to create a common denominator by multiplying each of the expressions by the denominator of the other expression. So what do we mean by that? So again, let's read that. If the rational expressions do not have like denominators, so I'm taking a look at these two fractions, they do not have the same denominator. One has a four and the other has a three. So I cannot add them as they are. Uh, if I were to add the numerators, I would get five and then the denominators would be seven. Three over four plus two over three does not equal five over seven. So we need to find out what that common denominator is. And we can generate the common denominator by multiplying the denominator of one by each of the values, the numerator and denominator, of the other uh, value or fraction. So let's go through exactly what I mean by that. So I have 2 thirds plus 3 fourths. And I want to add 2 thirds plus 3 fourths. What I do is I multiply the denominator of the second by both the numerator and denominator of the first. So I have 2 times 4 over 3 times 4. And then I multiply the numerator and denominator of the second term by the denominator of the first. So now I have 3 times 3 over 3 times 4. And I've just created a common denominator of 12. Now sometimes this might not be our least or lowest common denominator, but it will be a common denominator. It's a strategy to find a common denominator nonetheless. All right, so now I have 8, 2 times 4 over 3 times 4, which is 8 over 12, plus 3 times 3, or 9, over 3 times 4, which is 12. Now I just, by property of addition, I just add 8 and 9 together, 17 over 12, and 17 over 12 is my result. Now the property of addition, when I do not have a common denominator, would be a over c plus b over d is equal to a times d, or 2 times 4 over c times d, 3 times 4, plus b times c, or 3 times 3, over c times d, 3 times 4. And the result would be ad plus bc, or 8 plus 9, over cd, which is 12. And again, my result is 17 over 12. So the property of subtraction uh, and the process for finding the common denominator is exactly the same as in the property for addition. What we're going to do is we're going to multiply the denominator of the second term, or 7, by the numerator and denominator of the first term. So I have 7 times 7 over 8 times 7. And then I multiply the denominator of the first times the numerator of the second and the denominator of the second. So now I have 8 times 2 over 7 times 8. My common denominator is 56. My, numerator is in the, my numerator in the first term is not, uh, 49, or 7 times 7. And then I subtract 2 times 8, or 16. And I end up with 33, or the difference between 49 and 16, leaving my denominator the same. I end up with 33 over 56. All right, so the example that I give to my students is, I, I went to a pizza place, and I was super hungry. And I uh, was sharing a pizza with my mom. 
and I had three-fourths of the pizza and she had one-fourth of the pizza. And after we were done, I was still hungry. So I asked her if I could, or if we could order another pizza. And she said, no problem, as long as I get half this time, because she was also hungry too. So I'm trying to figure out how much or how many pizzas I've consumed after I ate that other half of pizza. And so what I want to do first is I want to find my common denominator. So again, three-fourths plus another half of a pizza does not equal four-sixths of a pizza. You can see that three-fourths is a little less than one. One half is half of one. So I know that the sum of these two values is going to be equal to more than one, more than likely. So more than one pizza I'm going to eat if I have a half a pizza and then also three-fourths of a pizza. So I need to find my common denominator. Now, what I can do is I can see that my common denominator could be 4 in this case, and I can rewrite 1 over 2 as 2 over 4. And let's see what kind of result we get here. If I change 1 over 2 to 2 over 4, so 2 over 4 is the same as 1 half, then I end up with a common denominator of 4. And I add 3 plus 2, leaving the denominator the same. And I end up eating 5 fourths of a pizza. That's a lot of pizza. Um, I'm a big pizza person. I'd love to eat five-fourths of a pizza, uh, but unfortunately right now I'm preoccupied, so I'll have to wait till we're done. Let's talk about the f uh, property of addition by multiplying the denominator of the second through the terms or the values and the fraction of the first and then the denominator of the first term through the numerator and denominator of the second. So if we work this out, so we found out that 5 fourths was our answer, right? So now we're going to multiply 2 times 3. So I have 3 times 2 over 2 times 4, or 4 times 2, plus 4 times 1, over uh, 4 times 2. So now, the common denominator that we've created in this second, uh, second expression is not, or equation, is not the same as the denominator that we've created in the first. The denominator in the first was a least common denominator of 4. But the common denominator of 8 will work nonetheless. And so uh, this ends up being a 1, right? So let's just make sure this is clear. So I end up with 6 over 8 plus 4 over 8. And that's equal to 10 over 8. Now I can simplify 10 over 8 because I have a common factor of 2. So 10 over 8 is the same as 5 times 2 over 4 times 2. 2 divided by 2 reduces to 1. And so I'm left with 5 fourths. Right? And this is the same answer here. So whether we use the lowest common denominator or just a common denominator, uh, by the process that we've discussed multiplying the denominator of one times both the numerator and denominator of the other and vice versa. If we have a lowest common denominator or just a common denominator, we can figure out what the sum of two fractions or the difference of two fractions is. All right, so let's move on. Okay, let's talk about complex fractions. And this is typically where students have a difficult time in Algebra 2. A complex fraction is a fraction that contains a fraction in its numerator and or its denominator. All right, so in this case, I have a fraction in both the numerator and denominator. And this is an example of a complex fraction. So again, a complex fraction, a fraction that contains a fraction in its numerator and or its denominator. And we're going to talk about two ways to solve this particular problem or to solve complex fractions. Let's talk about the first method. So method number one is to write the numerator and denominator each as a single fraction. Well, the numerator is already a single fraction. Denominator is not. So we need to add the two terms in the denominator together to get a single fraction. And then we would divide the numerator, or 3 over x plus 5, by the result of the addition of 2 over x minus 3 plus 1 over x plus 5. So when we divide fractions, we're actually multiplying the reciprocal. So as a result, what we would do is we'd find 
the value of the denominator in this case, 2 or the sum of 2 over x minus 3 plus 1 over x plus 5. And then we multiply 3 over x plus 5 by the reciprocal of the value that we found for the denominator. So that's a lot of math speak. Let's talk and show what we mean by method one. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to simplify both the numerator and denominator into a single fraction. Well, the numerator again is already a single fraction, so let's uh, add the two fractions in the denominator together to get a single fraction. And the first thing we need to do is find out what the common denominator is for the denominator of this complex fraction. I have x minus 3 and x plus 5. My common denominator is going to be, or can be, x minus 3 times x plus 5. So what I want to do is I want to multiply both uh, the numerator and denominator by x plus 5, and I get 2 times x minus 5 over x minus 3 times x minus 5 plus, now I'm going to multiply the denominator of the first times both the numerator and denominator of the second, x minus 3 over x minus 3 times x minus 5. All right, so I distribute the 2 through x minus 5 and I have 2x minus 10 plus x minus 3 all over x minus 3 times x minus 5. And I can simplify the uh, numerator in this expression. I have 2x plus x, that's 3x. And oh, you know what? I made a mistake here. This should be x plus 5. So I'm going to make this a plus 10. Uh, and I'm going to make this a plus 5 here. I'm going to make this a plus 5. So now I have 2x plus 10 plus x minus 3. And I end up with 3x plus 10 minus 3 plus 7 over x minus 3 times x plus 5. OK. So that value now is a single fraction for the denominator. And what I want to do is I want to multiply the numerator for method 1, the numerator, by the reciprocal of what I found to be the single fraction for the denominator. So let's go ahead and take care of that. I'm going to do some erasing here. And let's rewrite this as 3 over x plus 5 times x minus 3 times x plus 5 all over 3x plus 7. So let me erase this result that we got. And I end up with 3x plus 7 in my denominator. All right, so I see that x plus 5, uh, I have an x plus 5 in the denominator in the left term and x plus 5 in the numerator in the second term. So x plus 5 over x plus 5, those reduce to 1. And then I have a 3, I have x minus 3, I have a 3, 3x plus 7. There are no common terms in each of the, or no common factors in each of the terms. So I'm left with 3 times x minus 3 over 3x plus 7, which is the same as 3x minus 9 over 3x plus 7. And this is my final result using method 1. All right, let's talk about using method two. Now, method two uh, says that we can simplify a complex fraction uh, by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the lowest common denominator of every fraction in the numerator and the denominator. So what does that mean? Well, now I have to find the lowest common denominator or a common denominator between the, the fractions on the top or the numerator and the bottom denominator of the original complex fraction. So I have x plus 5, x plus 5, x minus 3. I see that my common denominator is going to be x plus 5 times x minus 3. And I have to multiply every single term by x plus 5 times x minus 3. Now sometimes this is an easy way to go. Sometimes method number 1 is the easiest way to go. Uh, personally, I like to do, I like to use method number 1 
but let's just show you how we handle uh, method number two. So I found that x minus 3 times x plus 5 is going to be my common denominator for both the numerator and denominator of the complex fraction. So I'm going to multiply the numerator first by x minus 3 times x plus 5. x minus 3 times x plus 5 is the same as x minus 3 times x plus 5 over 1. So you see here I have a common factor in x plus 5. So that reduces to 1. So I'm left with 3x minus 9 as my uh, numerator. Now let's handle each of the terms separately because we have to multiply both of them individually and separately by x minus 3 times x plus 5. So at first I have 2 over x minus 3 times x minus 3 times x plus 5 over 1. I have a common factor of x minus 3. They reduce to 1. I'm left with 2x plus 10. So 2x plus 10 is my result for the left term, or the term on the left. And then I multiply 1 over x plus 5 times x minus 3 times x plus 5 over 1. I see that x plus 5 is a common factor, so I'm left with just x minus 3. All right now I have to simplify by combining like terms. I have 2x plus x is 3x, so I'm going to rewrite my simplified complex fraction. 2x plus x is 3x plus 10 minus 3 is plus 7, so I end up with 3x plus 7, and that's my result. So let's go back and take a look at the result that we got from method 1. We had 3x minus 9 over 3x plus 7. It's the same result we have by using method 2. Right, so you can use whatever method that you choose, whatever seems to be the easiest way or whatever you feel most comfortable with. But as a student, you should learn to operate with both types of methods. All right, so just in summary, method number one, we find, uh, uh, we rewrite both the numerator and denominator as a single fraction. So uh, in this case, we just left the single fraction, the numerator alone. Then we added 2 over x minus 3 plus 1 over x plus 5. In method number 2, what we did was we found a common denominator between all of the denominators in all of the terms in the complex fraction, in both the numerator and denominator. We multiplied that common denominator by each of the terms in the complex fraction, and then we simplified. And in both cases, we came out with the same answer.